Okay. I just had to... I had a call, so I had to... Read. Continuing. One was for... Oh, 341s. One, or getting chewed out in general. One was for chewing and standing up at chow at the defect, so you can't stand up and eat at the defect. You have to sit and eat. Another was for, quote, peach fuzz on my face. Another for looking around for directions while marching in a two-man detail. Another for messing up entering the flight office with proper drill movements. My detail? I used to go to guide on practice during details, but I'm now academic monitor and no longer a flight guide. He was a flight guide. I play all positions in details. I do latrine, shoe liner, the bed aligner, end of bed display, fixer, stairway crew. I fold my wingman's clothes when they aren't there. Yes, I do use the security tray. So, latrine crew means you clean the bathrooms. I was latrine chief. It sucks. You don't want to do that because I I didn't like it at all. I had to be a mean guy, and I didn't I didn't like that at all. Shoe aligner. You have this big stick, and you go around the bedpost, and from bedpost. You put your stick against the bedpost and you align the shoes. Bed liner, so you have these tiles in the dorms and you have to make sure that they are straight and they're not crooked. It's the easiest, it's like stupid. And a bed display, so you'll have your towel and you'll have your laundry bag and then you'll have your backpack and you just have to make sure that they're aligned. It's pretty simple. Stairway crew, you just have to sweep the cheese graters. I fold my women's clothes when they aren't there. Yes, I do use the security tray. The security tray, so you have your security drawer, which is the only, which is your quote junk drawer. They, they're not, they can inspect it, but they're, it's not something that usually happens. It is inspectable, but don't really count on it. You will have a security tray, which is where your phone charger and your anything of monetary value will go in that tray. Now, a great tip to do is when you're rolling your shirt, when you fold it, that that second fold out. You, there's a video about how to fold your clothes. When you roll it, you put your shirt in that tray, and you wrap, you put part of the shirt underneath the tray and you roll it really tight and it forms within that tray instead of having it be like a cone if that made any sense i don't know i'm sorry i'm probably really boring right now i still don't have my computer i had my computer when i was home on recruiter's assistance but i'm at here now so this guy says i'm in a bay bed 17 towards the windows we have four empty beds back here I have the quietest, cleanest part of the dorm. I am truly blessed. I am a little bit jealous because near the windows is where I wanted to sleep because I'm used to white noise when I sleep and it was it's absolutely silent when you're at basic training and that was hard to get used to. Honestly, the BMT videos in general weren't too much value. I could give so much better advice that's actually practical topics and specifics like Reveille at 0545, so that's when you wake up, they have the trumpets, you know, you know what I mean. At 0545 every morning, order of priorities, such as, as soon as you wake up and you get dressed, you should already be in your PT clothes, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. First thing you do when you get to basic training and when you wake up is you make your bed. Wake up early, exclamation point. I get up at 0520, so we all had this magical, at, when I was at basic training, we all had this magical fairy that would have our beds made before Reveille and we were telling our MTI that and then he was like yeah I have that magical fairy too it's really cool. <laughs> PT the exercises we do and how to do them without over committing strength slash stamina. When you do a push-up don't go down carefully have gravity push you down and you just you just push yourself up or with sit-ups have gravity push you down and you push yourself back up to to, to conserve your energy so you can do more push-ups within that minute so that you can get that Warhawk. Chow. Trick tray. Heels together. 
no chewing while standing. So when you're when you're getting your food, it's tray to tray. You have your hand inside your tray. You have people that are like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. I don't give a crap if you're uncomfortable. I'm going to be shoulder to shoulder. We're brothers. We've seen each other naked two times every day. We can be next to each other while we're getting some dang food. Heels together at a 45 degree angle, like you're in the position of attention, except instead of your hands down, you have your hands up inside, inside your tray. No chewing while standing. So once you're done with your food, you make sure your mouth is completely empty. And then you stand up and head over. You don't walk and chew at the same time. Permission to break ranks, etc. So if you have an appointment or if you're going somewhere and you're with your wingman but you're out of your flight and you need, you need to go eat and there's people in line you say permission to break ranks and that person will say reason and let's say appointment at read at immediately or something like that and it said proceed and then you can do that. Wingman policy, freaking no video mentioned this. <clears throat> that changed. I would really, it would really help to know it before BMT. Pretty much a wingman policy means you have a buddy, buddy system. Other stuff like what RLA is, R R L A as in Romeo Lima, Romeo Lima Alpha phonetically. R L A is recruit living area, which is your locker and how you arrange the st things and how you have no demerits, meaning you have no strings or any sort of lint or dust, making sure it's absolutely perfectly clean. And not to stress out over it. Don't stress out over it. I have a bunch. I still have a bunch of great tips. I still have, still remember almost everything from basic training. Give a good effort into a near and neat and organized wall locker. You'd be surprised about how many people are freaking lazy about their RLA. You know, like they just throw their stuff in their locker and they just barely, they just terribly roll their stuff in. Have some stinking pride in your uniform. Come on. I worried too much about it and it was really easy, only two demerits. This this individual, he got on a graduate. I did not already tell him. How class time is an oasis from the yelling. Yes, when you have class time at basic training, consider that a little break because you are in with your MTI and you're in class, it's a little more relaxed. You can take your ABU coat off and just have your CNT get a little more comfortable, but don't sleep. Don't sleep. Using classroom time to point point tops, topics of emphasis. Sometimes M MTIs give away topics that are on the EOC. So for example, during class time, you'll be reading that BMTSG, the study guide. And while you're reading it, the MTI who's giving the lecture will say, oh, this is probably important or something like that. I don't know. And then that's when in your head, you're like, oh, wake up. Oh, I gotta I should probably highlight this and study this later. Yes, I got a number for you, so. I use class time to draw a calendar and count down the days. Parents or friends or whoever, mail your airman or your trainee a little calendar I emailed. So a, a few, I have two guinea pigs. I have this individual and I have another female who's in the same AFSC as mine. And I've helped her a bit. So. Copy the schedule for every week, every Sunday. On Sundays, or probably on that Saturday, your MTI will put the next week's schedule in the day room, and that pretty much lets you know in advance what's going on the rest of the week, which is really helpful so you know what's what to expect. Always be in the know, so. Being sick slash injured, Read IDMT, Viper, Medhold, I escorted, oh, oh, okay. I escorted trainees twice. I got hospital food, watched TV, and asked about getting an ultrasound by an army captain. You got hospital food. I think that's like better food than what they have at basic training. At basic training, the defect, it's it's fine. Like it's not slop, but it's just basic cafeteria. It's like, it's like high school lunch food, I, I would suppose. It's real food and they cook it there, but it's not gourmet or anything. It, it's fine, it's, it's fine. 
Watch TV. You got to watch TV during basic training. You lucky dog. Wow. Ask about getting an ultrasound. Now that's just wasting time. Come on. I get it though. Just taking a little break. I, I had one day at Reed and I needed that. And it was second week of training for me. I had a little bit of, I was a little sick as well. But I had a little bit of abrasion just from running and the glasses on my ear. Last page. There's really so much I log that would be useful to know at BMT. Like how the toilets either don't flush or flush too much. Yes. If you're in, quote, Alcatraz, I feel bad for you because I don't know if you have a lot of toilets. But if you're in Disneyland, I believe there's four, 12, 14 toilets. A couple of them didn't work. And there was one that would flush too much, like it would just overflow. It was like a hurricane. Uh, I'm happy to collaborate with you to make a truly practical guide to help prospective trainees. Yes. So I had these two guinea pigs to see if my advice with the new 2019 schedule for basic training would be helpful. It seems like this individual is doing just fine and I've been mailing him perhaps maybe helping him a little too much by telling him exactly what's happening two weeks ahead. I'm like that outside source. Now mind you, I know if you are an Air Force official, no, I am not giving any answers to the EOC. I am just merely helping and there's people outside. Yeah, I'm just only helping, just giving advice. I'm not saying like, oh, you have to know these chapters for the EOC that because that's what the other trainees at basic training are for. That's not for me to tell because you know that they do tell those things in the bathrooms at the defect. I'm 